two more minutes before we begin. I will begin at six o'clock sharp because I'm sure we all have days that we want to get to. Uh, evenings, mornings, afternoons, uh, maybe go back to bed. <laughs> I'm sure someone will be kind enough to do that for you, Ranjana. That's, uh, that's an easy thing to do. Uh, be careful, though. There are a few IBDP chemistry teachers Facebook groups. I'm in the IB chemistry teachers group, and it has like a purple banner at the top. Hello, Wisconsin. Welcome, Michelle. Welcome to the show. Next, we've got Indian, America, Jeddah, Singapore, uh, Hong Kong. One minute, one minute to go. Oh, not forgetting Australia. <laughs> Welcome, Australia. <laughs> um, yeah, Vijay. <laughs> Hi, Peru. Oh, excellent. Hi, Taiwan. Well, hey. You made my day. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> right, let's wait for the clock to tick to six. We said we'd start at 6 p.m. sharp, wherever you are in the world. Right, so there is 6 p.m. So thank you all very much indeed for coming. Really appreciate you giving up your time. And I really hope that you find something or most things uh, useful within this uh, presentation today. So a little bit about myself. I've taught diploma chemistry for ooh, uh, since 2008. So that's 12 scary years now. Um, I've taught in Japan, in Malaysia, I've taught in Guernsey, an island just between uh, the UK and France, and currently I've been four years now in Singapore. I'm the head of year 12, and uh, I've been moderating and examining for the IB for the last five years. So I'm not representing the IB this evening. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I felt that there was an absence or a paucity or a not enough information being given out uh, to support teachers and indeed students. Um, when we're being asked to do a uh, database or indeed uh, simulation IAs, there's very little that's out there to actually help us. And certainly I was in that position when it started a few years ago. So if I can do a little bit to help others, then uh, I'll consider this uh, a good use of everybody's time. OK, so uh, let's kick off right then. The IA, which was shared in the Chemistry Teachers Facebook group, was this one, which is the uh, to what extent does the size of the central atom in HXH affect molecular geometry by using ligand close packing model framework. Now, first of all, the first things um, to do when looking at an internal assessment is basically not to do anything. Um, it's to just, just read the internal assessment. So begin and start to have a read through, keep an, keep an open mind. Um, we are guided as moderators to reward where we see uh, positive things, good things, and not to penalize for an absence of things. Now, to clarify that, just because they've missed something, we're not going to penalize it, but if they include something which is incorrect, we may well penalize it. And you will see that as we develop uh, looking at this internal assessment. So the students started off in the standard manner um, as part of the syllabus. I, I was interested in VSEPR. And then he goes on to talk about immediately the ligand close packing model. So the first thought is great. The students read around the subject. They've uh, investigated. So their personal engagement must be wonderful. But hang on a minute. It, maybe that does show PE, but we keep an open mind as we go through. He's underlined optimizing a model for bond prediction of group 15 and 16 using LCP and VSEPR as a basis and central atom as a predictor. Now, this is not a typical research question. Um, it doesn't mean it gets penalized for not being a typical research question. Um, but we need to be careful when we step outside of the uh, standard uh, five by three. 
Now, when doing a database, the five independent variables in triplicates, good evening, Sungwan, uh, five independent variables in triplicate, you often cannot do for a database. And for those people that have watched my video on how to do a database during the pandemic, you will see that I'm actually advocating that you have multiple independent variables or you have multiple uh, readings from as many websites as you can get because the central idea is it has to look like 10 hours. If it doesn't look like 10 hours, you're not going to get the marks. So we'll park that for now. We'll just, just think about it, keep it in the back of our minds. There's a bit here about VSEPR, which is standard textbook stuff about bond, bond, uh, bonding, non-bonding repulsion from this person called Gillespie, who does arrive and appear quite a lot during this internal assessment. Um, I had a problem here. I don't know about anybody else. Um, it talks about ligands around a central atom. And then even on the same page, it contradicts it by saying, as we all know, ligands have uh, lone pairs of electrons doting, donating into vacant d orbitals and a transition metal. But transition metals are transition metals. And this research question was talking about group 15 and group 16. So again, nothing penalized yet, but I'm thinking, hmm, what's, what's going to develop here? Um, we see a list of bond angles. Um, it says bond angle. I assume that it is degrees. We can assume it's degrees. He should have included that. He should have included some uncertainty. It doesn't matter if it's a database or an experimental IA. Wherever there is a number, there should be, there must be an associated uncertainty to show that the student has considered precision throughout. Gillespie is mentioned again. In fact, you'll see him many, many times. It then talks about hydrogen has low electronegativity values. That's because it's electropositive, as we know, unless it's in a hydride. So the thing which I'm looking at, first of all, as I'm standing back and just looking at the IA, I'm actually looking at the chemistry before I even think about the rubric, before I even think about exploration, analysis, evaluation. Is the chemistry good? Does the chemistry make sense? Okay. It doesn't matter about the level of the chemistry, whether it's from the standard or the higher, or even this one is trying to go beyond, which lots of students do. But let's see if he succeeds. So he has put an uncertainty in here, 0 0.1 degrees. That's nice. But again, it's limited to four. Why could he not uh, continue with the rest of group 15 molecules um, and include those values? I mean, it's interesting. It's nice to see that antimony hydride is 91.7 and ammonia is 107.3. Um, OK, we'll park that. We're still thinking. He then starts to um, become a little bit raveled up in his own sentences. I don't know if anybody else found this, but uh, saying despite the early successes in the SEPR, some more complex compounds, which is, now this is nitrogen with silicon and three hydrogens as three bonding, I assume, into the nitrogen. So he's saying a big group differs from the SEPR. That's okay, that's fine. But where have we seen this before? Well, it's on the teacher support material, isn't it? So he's basically using the teacher support material. That's fine as an inspiration. So again, no penalty yet. We'll discuss that shortly. He's talking about planar geometries and bond angles. It would be beautiful here if the student had taken the time to include some images or some space fill models or um, some uh, chem mol or any of the drawing packages that you can get to show that he actually cares about communicating his ideas. Is then putting bond lengths in. I don't know where he got that from. Um, bond angle is compounds to decrease. What's the reference? Again, I'm picking up the ligand. Is it a ligand? I'm not sure. Maybe that was the argument of the theory. But again, I need to check on that one. Um, he then makes a, an error here. Um, molecules, boron, carbon, and nitrogen. I shouldn't the ligand, ligand repulsions are important for AX3, such as BF3, which is fine, in comparison to AX3. But he's already said AX3, and then he mentioned boron tetrafluoride ion. So there's, there's certainly some sloppiness or some laziness creeping into to the write-up. On the face of it, it does look really powerful. But looking a bit deeper, it perhaps could do with a bit more rigour in the explanation. And certainly more um, explanation of the chemistry and of the space fill model. He has gone down the route of including a full paragraph here. I'm suggesting perhaps a table would help. And I'm just making a note here. In exploration, 
Um, he has certainly um, got some reasonable material, but only used one or two sources, and he could have certainly added to it quite easily. So, yeah, we're keeping that in mind. He's not put any limitations, and these the these must be limited by repulsions between neighbours. You've got oxygen, you've got two chlorine atoms with three lone pairs of electrons around the chlorine. These, these will be repelling, these will be pushing each other apart, as well as the lone pair of electrons there. But he's not considering that. He's just talking about the bond angle in the central atom. He's not considering what's happening on the outside. Um, Gillespie, again, the same uh, reference. And then it's inconsistency in the BSEPR model can be cons consistently explained with the LCP model. Well, can it? Because we've not seen any evidence so far. And then it turns out that was actually, uh, how many? One, two, three, three pages of preamble. So <laughs> now we actually begin the IA. And I'm sure you noticed that one of the big things about this IA is it's 27, I think, pages long. Um, something else to bear in mind. So the raw data is from these data sources, that's okay. I could have given us the link for it. For the bond angles, I said to use the first three sources. So he's already said that he found five, he only used three, so he's limited himself. Um, it's also important to note I'll use covalent radii instead of atomic radii. This is sensible, I'm calculating bond angles, and bond angles are produced when two molecules are bonded together. Well, they're not, it's when two or more atoms are bonded together to form a molecule. Again, there's evidence of a lack of uh, awareness of what he's actually doing. Bond angles, one decimal place, agreed, that's good. Uh, data manipulation and analysis. I was not convinced, it was not clear why this student had taken away hydrogen from the central atom's size and then divided by this. It's a measure, it's a calculation. I can't fault the calculation apart from it having no uncertainty in there, but it's not abundantly clear why he has done it. Does anyone have any questions at this moment in time? I realise I'm probably just going into IA moderating mode here. Is there any questions that uh, anybody would like to raise at this moment in time? Okay, I'll look back back shortly see if there are any questions okay so now we've got a results table we've got no uncertainty no uncertainty no uncertainty um, research question how could we comment on it I would say that the research question is unclear but I'll, I'll come to that at the end of the uh, uh, marking percent difference okay size but it's it's there's a paucity of data given that there are many many websites and even the one on the teacher support material that's available for all to see, including students, has more references and more molecules than this. So there's a general feeling that the student has, has rushed and certainly been um, less than careful with the chemistry. So the experimental bond angle, because of for proportionality, not quite sure what he's saying there. Uh, they're not empirically 100, and then it's referring to a graph. We don't know which graph. There's an R squared, where is the graph? Uh, to test the reliability, calculate the bond angle from the data gathered and the covalent radii of bismuth from this reference here, and then I subtract it from hydrogen again. If anyone can enlighten me why he's done that, I don't know, but I've looked through his IA and I still can't find a reason why he, he actually did that. He's consistent though. We're not going to penalise for um, a simple mistake at the beginning. He's consistently applied it to each one, so he's going to have a consistent systematic error, I guess, throughout his internal assessments. So consistent error, but the rationale is poorly elucidated. Again, we're restricted to four, but the uncertainties are, are limited. And then we have hypothesis two. I think hypothesis two, what was that? Well, he said a second hypothesis uh, during the, the preamble, but you have to go back and find it. And this is just raw data. Uh, does he need raw data to use? His, uh, Scott, yes, he does need to include the raw data and then include the average data in a separate table. Yeah. Um, but again, it's it's not too bad. It's not like oh my god, this is a this is a showstopper. This is terrible. It's it's not at all. 
but there are clear areas where if it had spent a bit more attention to detail, he could have got a lot more marks than, than he actually uh, received potentially. So we've got chlorine ligands. Okay, I'll forgive you for that one. Um, this could possibly be the electronegativity of the chlorine ligands has affected the correlation of the graph. Hence, it's interesting to see both the size. Now, this is getting interesting. This is good. Um, Kaiser is asking how reasonable to use ligand. We, we when we're moderating, we, we, I'm probably perhaps more a bit more forgiving than, than you think. Um, the student has obviously thought that all of these uh, atoms donating to the central one is a ligand. And when you're looking at ligand uh, packing theory, which he's using, it does use that word. Strictly speaking, yes, in, in IB terms, and in chemistry terms, it's, it's incorrect because it's not donated into a transition metal. Um, but again, if he'd, if he'd used it and then said during this, this is an oversimplification or this is a fault in the model or this is a, something that we're aware of because a ligand donates into a vacant d orbital, mm -hmm. then that would have been absolutely fine. But the fact that he's omitted it means it's, it's not fine. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Then we're down to three. Um, but then he says, I did not see tellurium difluoride because it stated the bond angle of 180 degrees. Well, hmm, it should be bent, but this needs exploring further. It seems like a bit of a throwaway comment. I'd love to have seen a picture of a molecule there and um, some of the bond angles elucidated. Fluorine ligands again, here's that word. Um, it's talking again, a random um, calculation here. I assume this is the difference now between bismuth and fluorine rather than hydrogen and the atom which is in question. Uh, we then have another uh, calculation which has arrived without any great deal of uh, explanation about where it's come from and no attempt at precision seems like a common theme throughout this IA. Um, he then goes on to speak about the same things. Uh, all discussion suggests a fixed molecule so that was another thing. All these bonds he thinks are fixed in place, but clearly they're not. These molecules are dynamic things which are which are moving, and perhaps that could have been an avenue that he could have explored to make this one a bit more of a robust internal assessment. Uh, from the observations above, a deeper, deeper analysis still needs to be done before proving this hypothesis. I agree entirely. And now we're on page 11. We're on page 11 and we get the subtitle analysis. Okay, so I've seen this, I've read it, it's good. I think you've read it too. Again, precision is omitted, but now we do eventually have five. And instead of ligand, it could just be atom, Dawn. It could just put the uh, coordinating atom. That would have been a much more uh, scientifically, chemically correct. Um, it could have done bond length uh, or bond strength, correlated it with bond strength. That's a really good one to do. That's not on the teacher support material. I've had that one banded about though. If you can correlate the bond length with the bond strength and talk about single, double, triple, and do some calculations and use the websites, that's that's a beautiful IA to do. Again, I felt like you needed a table down here. There's lots of words that you have to dig through. And as a moderator, I must say that tables are an absolute godsend in terms of marking, okay? Um, in here, I've had to read it two or three times to try and glean what he's saying. And again, it's it's limited. It just seems that it, it's kind of rushed at the end. We now have electronegativity. It's good, but electronegativity, where's the uncertainty? It should have at least plus or minus 0 0.01 for the last decimal place. Uh, but he's not even done that. And there's only four, and there's no precision. Now he's talking about the reduce the interligand radius. Um, think about that for a second. What what does what does that mean? I'm not not entirely convinced, but I'm not going to penalise him for that. That means I need to do some research as the moderator and have a look, okay, just to make sure I understand what he's saying. This is just a rehash of a statement he made earlier. Um, in molecules with chlorine ligands, the ligand-ligand repulsion is greater than I guess that's lone pair bonding pair repulsion. Again, we, we need to see more numbers in here. There are uh, one two different molecules in here and only one number um, it was okay in the end he pulled himself out the hole but there's no source there's no reference as to where he's got that from and here we have Gillespie again uh, it's, it reads like he's only looked at one or two references it hasn't when it comes to the end but it's not saying that within his IA at last hurrah 
we get a couple of molecules which are given. So we have antimony tetrafluoride, I think I've got my glasses on, and, and NF3, we can't quite see a lone pair of electrons on there. But for all these molecules which he's given here, I would have expected a lot more uh, information about the space fill and the lone pairs and the repulsion. And there's so much more he could have done with this. We're now on page 14, okay? Uh, we've got the summary, again, no units, no precision. And then it says conclusion. And I remember moderating this for the first time thinking, well, where are all the graphs? I mean, for an IA, even for a database simulation IA, you must produce a graph. Your graph must have errors. Um, error bars on the graph would be great. You don't have to do error bars, but at least make an attempt. The IB don't care how we do the uncertainties as long as we do or consider the uncertainties. If it just takes the last decimal place in this table, which is here now, so for the oxygen, just do plus or minus 0 0.1 and then plot that on a graph and put the error bars on, happy days. The conclusion, well, that was kind of the conclusion. It does refer to the research question. I would be expecting a hint of treatment of the errors implicit within, even if it's taken obviously from a database. You don't know what the errors were from the data that you've got, but you can at least have a go. And it's, and it's the having a go that you're rewarded for. No one expects you to call up the university and say, how do you know this is the bond angle? But just take the last decimal place. You've tracked the uncertainties, you've ticked the box, happy days, it's all good. He's restated something earlier, which I com uh, commented on, but which was not clear then, it's not clear now. Okay. This is poorly discussed. The results were quite confusing, which were inside here. And again, this one reference, Gillespie, seems like he's based his whole eye on this. Uh, interesting, but use numbers. So there's a lot of words, there's an absence of, of number. And um, to what extent is this uh, reference, this paragraph about the uh, scale or the direction of the difference between VSEPR and this LCP ligand close packing thing, which I don't purport that we use. Is then copied this. We all know this one. I think if you go to Google Images and put um, molecular geometries, this is probably one of the first or the second images that come up. And then it just talks about those things. It's textbook, it's not going beyond. Um, there's, again, there's a lot of potential here, which is uh, not particularly used. Uh, Kajal was asking if the student had not used LCP, but only VSEP using covalent reactor of the atom, would it be oversimplified? Um, I think it would have been oversimplified, Kajal is the quick answer. It could still score reasonably well. You could probably get maybe a five out of there um, if you put the uncertainties in, if you plotted the graphs, if you use lots of data, if you compared with different sources. I think that will become clear when I show you what I believe is a 24 for this year. That that will come abundantly clear when I show you the, the next um, IA. Okay. No examples were given here. I can see there's a complete absence of references, but then, then is here's my appendix. And, you know, I do tell the students to put superfluous or extra data or reams of data logger data into the appendix. But this is actually, this is his, this is his IA. This should have been in the body of the IA. So we told him to do this. But, and now we can see that there is a, a clear absence of uh, data and information. The scales, they're not the best. We can't see what's going on. There's no evidence of attempt at an uncertainty uh, within here. And these go on and on and on. Hi, Alexa. Hi. So, um, appendix. Moderators don't read the appendix. So, we don't read the appendix. But look at all this lovely stuff. He's now put the uncertainties in the place where the moderator doesn't read. Um, would a moderator be that mean to not use this? No, I don't think that they would. But he's been a bit of an idiot to uh, not put them in, even though there could have been a lot more that he'd done. So, bibliography. Now, this was another surprise as we're reading it. All these um, references here were not within the IA. We don't know where they've been used and, and how they've been used. So I think, as said, it's 6.22. You've all had a chance to have a look at the IA. Um, would you like to now pop into the chat 
the score that you think this IA would have got. I have my marks, which I'll share with you when I've seen what you think it should be. And I also have how I was moderated. So the IB didn't totally agree <laughs> with me either. So let's see, what score would you give this IA? Kajal, give me a number, please. Out of 24. Thank you, David. I'll not give the game away until we've got some uh, more in the chat. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Colm. Fifteen, seventeen, seventeen. Oh, interesting. We've got thirty-six people in here. Let's get a few more, please. Fourteen, seventeen, fifteen. Gosh, this is actually uh, quite well grouped. Sixteen, Michelle. Yep. Yeah. Oh, David, that's a good question. Um, I'll, show, I'll share with you after this uh, section uh, the guidance that moderators are given. Um, it, it can go. I've seen some things kicked out on the Jenny 18. Generous, very good. <laughs> uh, so back to David, sorry. I've seen on the IB Chemistry Teachers Facebook page people saying you cannot go above 12 pages and you must not or you'll be penalised. It's, it's not like that. Um, if it's con It depends if it's concise. That's the danger. If it's concise and it's got good information in there and it's quality chemistry and all that good stuff then you could probably go to 13, maybe even 14 pages. But this one, we're at page 28. Um, he's clearly um, not being concise. There's big empty spaces on the paper. There's, there's many reasons why uh, communication should be knocked down for, for this IA, not just the uh, poor arrangement and uh, bad use of space within the IA. Okay, so we've got 16, 15, 16, 14, 15, 16, 18, 14, 13, 14 from Kajal. So um, I think now is the moment of truth. Um, this is uh, what I scored it. So the when I score and I moderate, this is, this is what I do. Um, sorry for my poor handwriting. I've, I've prepared this today in the middle of lessons. Personal engagement, I thought somewhere between one and two to yes he's tried and I want to reward that as the moderator but I'm not convinced there's too many areas of sloppiness there's too much unexplained stuff there's so many things he could have done to give a full two but I'll just park that for now exploration there was no attempt at uh, let's start from the back uh, forwards there was no attempt at safety ethical environmental it could have linked this to some environmental stuff. I know there's no chemicals. I know there's no issue, no disposal issues, but he should have said that. There are no ethical or environmental issues associated with this IA because it was all data. It can't get the higher bands because there's so much missing. There's absolutely an absence of stuff to moderate. So I'd say around two, three for exploration. Analysis, three, four, maybe a four on a really good day with my best socks on, but definitely a three, maybe push to a four. Why? Because precision was not mentioned. The graphs were not within the uh, uh, body of the IA. Evaluation, I would expect uncertainty treatment. Refer back to the research question. The magnitude of the errors. Why did this website not agree with this website? What happened there? There's no quantification of the errors, so there's no way that that, that student can go over the three for evaluation. Communication, if I was... Um, uh, if I was in, having a bad day, I'd give that a two because it's too long. There's too many errors. The chemistry in parts is great and in parts is not so great. But if I'm having a good day, it's around about a three. So this is the, the key to my moderation uh, approach. So if I've got, if I'm having a bad day, it's one, add two is three, add three is six, add uh, three is nine, add two, 11 will be my lowest score. My highest score would be two, three, five, nine, 12, 15. So I always put the mark that I send to the IB equidistant between my 
worst mood score and my best mood score. I'm sure there's a more scientific way to put that. But I gave it 13. Now, when it came back from the IB, they said I'd been too harsh. And the moderator gave it 15. So I think um, in terms of the uh, range of scores that, that we gave it, you guys gave it, I think you're absolutely spot on. Because plus or minus one is fine. Plus or minus two is also fine. Plus or minus three is an issue. Uh, you might need to look at the, the, the bands. But this is the best piece of advice I was given. If it, Most decisions will be borderline between the different uh, criteria on the uh, rubric. So do your worst. Do the best you could possibly give it. Hit in the middle and you're there or thereabouts. Okay. Maybe I was a bit mean that day and should have been more uh, generous in my marking. Or well, that's what the IB thought. So this document I have shared underneath the IA pandemic video on my YouTube channel. And I, as I'm sure you guys do, I will go through and I will tick the boxes until that student no longer gets it, no longer ticks that box. So um, I'm not going to go through that in any great detail. Um, that is there. Again, I will append this under the video after today's session. And you are welcome to, to beg, borrow or steal that as I did. Okay. So, well done, guys. You all just about hit where, where we uh, ought to have been. So, should we have a look at 24? Or let, I'd love to know what you think um, of this uh, next IA that I'm going to share with you. So, hopefully the difference between this IA and the IA which I just uh, went through with you will be abundantly clear. So immediately, what do we see? Well, it's a nice background. Um, I can see references. And it's talking about polar surface area, lipophilicity. <laughs> sounds a bit biology, but okay. And hydrogen bonding. That sounds promising. Is there a correlation between the polar surface area and hydrogen bonding between polar surfaces and lipophilicity with a theoretical coefficient of determination R squared of 0 0.76 as opposed to 0 0.3? This is promising. The students found a method, they've done extensive research, and they found the me method, it looks like a partition coefficient between uh, concentration in octanol and concentration in, in water. And, and she's re researched extensively. It's quite a simple relationship, but no one's going to penalise a simple relationship. She explains what log p-value of zero means that it's equally partitioned. If it's negative, it's more concentrated aqueous. And then she links this with the actual blood-brain barrier and how this links with, with medicines and drugs and how it's available in the human body. Now, I'm, I'm already thinking this, this, this is good. I'm kind of liking this. She's got university references. It's not Wikipedia. It's not, what's that awful thing that kids sometimes use? Quora, that thing. It's actually not an academic, authentic reference. Uh, she's talking about hydrogen bonding. It's a stock image, but hey ho, it's good chemistry. She's a standard level student. She's got different people arguing about what the polar surface area will mean. Um, shielding, burial of polar atoms within three-dimensional structures. This is good stuff. This is like reading a, an academic research, which is, you know, the top end of what we're looking for. Research question. Polar surface area, demonstrate a stronger relationship with the lipophilicity, which is the log p-value, or the number of hydrogen bond donors and acceptors of a drug. Wow, clear, focused. But she's got a number of things going on there, and that's what we need for database. Don't limit it to just one IV, one DV. You can have multiple within there. People often struggle with control variables. This student's managed to find some control variables. Uh, the atom-induced polarity in the drug molecules. How is she going to control that? Well, she's talked about the electronegativity values. She's talked about some references here. She's looked at Elmsley, she's looked at Karen and uh, Mundy, and we would look at those references and check them. That's really good. Uh, part one and two will have independent dependent variables, corresponds to their assigned sub-research questions. So there she's divided it up. So you can see with this one, the last one was really hard to actually find what on earth the student was talking about. This one, it's in your face. You can see immediately what the student's doing. This is a, this is a statement of gold. This database investigation, there are no safety environmental or ethical considerations the mark is for consideration of environmental ethical considerations she's considered it she gets the mark she's not penalized for missing that out 
She decided to look at 10 drugs. Does that feel like about 10 hours work? Pretty much, yes. She said the databases that she's going to be using, so we can check those out. And then what do we see? We see a table which is akin to the um, tables that we would see in the experimental or the primary data sort of internal assessments. So polar surface area in angstroms from one to three, and she's taken an average of those with the uncertainty at the top of the table. Just tick, tick, tick all the way through, you know? Consistent decimal places with the uncertainty and the value. This has got one DP, that's all one DP. This has got three, that's all three. Relationship between average polar surface area and log P. So she's done some data processing. Analysis is looking great. She's commented on her uncertainties, love it. And here's a nice graph. This could be clearer. I'm gonna to get to sharpen this up. I think when we, uh, before we send this off, this, this big, big blue line, which is here on the IA, but she's got a lovely scatter here. She's got the R squared value, prime and uh, prominent at the bottom. The scale is appropriate. Um, there are error bars with each of the points. So she can talk about those within here. She talks about difference between different websites. Um, and then she goes on and she does her sums and she does a bit of averaging. Even for averaging, you can still get the marks for data processing, even if you're just averaging. Um, I, was mark <laughs> I was kicked out of moderating one year because I said that just averaging is not enough. And the IB said, Mr. Mitchley, yes, it is. So, <laughs> so I learned my lesson. Even just averaging is enough to get the high band on analysis. She's commented on the uncertainty. She's got a bit of averaging here. And guess what? There's a beautiful graph there. Yes, the R squared value is 0 0.52, which is pretty sucky. But she comments about why it's pretty sucky. She comments about data and it's authentic data and why it is what it is. We could improve this with a maximum and a minimum gradient and maybe I'll get her to do that before we, we send it off. Um, but again, she, she's researched, got effective PA on the NHBD and NHBA, which she talked about earlier. Um, she looks at the percentages and then she's plotted average log P against average, average polar surface area. So this is, this is gold because she's actually found a beautiful relationship between the values which she uh, was elucidating at the beginning of this IA. She talks about the outliers. This is a kid that wants to achieve, right? You can just see that. Um, error bars here, this is beautiful. Average polar surface area. And then as we go down for the evaluation, and I encourage all my students to do evaluation like this. Again, compare this with the previous IA that we, we looked at. If the student puts a table with the limitation, the impact and the improvement in the same table, the moderator just goes tick, 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 straight through. You're in the mid to top bands. If there's quantification in there, you're in the top bands, okay? Don't give ream paragraphs and paragraphs where we have to look through all this stuff. I want to see what the limitation is, what happened to it and what's the improvement. Is the improvement reasonable? Tick, done, top bands. She's got one, two, three, four, um, limitations within there which is pretty good for a database because you don't know how the experiment was done you don't know who did it when did it all these things she's restated her research question you must restate your research question within the conclusion and she obviously has a suggestion for extension within here bibliography this has all been used throughout and look at that just wow absolutely uh, I think this is this is top-notch so, uh, fellow teachers, obviously I can't share this one with you. It's for submission this year, so please uh, don't screenshot it. That would be much appreciated or use it. Um, but what are your thoughts on this IA in comparison to the first one that I shared with you? And give me an idea, please, of what score. I've already given you my idea. But I think this is pretty high. Um, what score do you think this IA should uh, receive from the uh, moderator, please? Thank you. Uh, David, yes, you can send your IA to me. You can find my email address uh, on the about contact on uh, my uh, da -da -da YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, this IA was 15 pages long, and I think the last three pages, or uh, one, two, three, the last three pages were the bibliography. Uh, 
Excellent. I appreciate I've only skimmed through it and you've not had a chance to fully digest everything that's in there, but uh, clearly I don't want to uh, share this around until it's marked for, for this year. Brilliant. Thank you, uh, those that gave the, the feedback. The last thing I wanted to do today, uh, I hope you found what we've done so far useful in, in some way, is guidelines for examiners. I'm not sure that I can actually share this as a file, but I think give, given the pandemic, given the COVID situation, given the facts that kids have not been able to access the thing. This is one of the motivators for doing this. I think that the, you know, the kids have had a raw deal and we need to help them as much as we possibly can. Um, I think I will make a version of this. I'll put it into my own words and I'll share this as well, uh, probably at the end of the weekend. I'm not going to do that this evening. Uh, then I don't get into copyright issues from the IB. But this gives really good guidance on uh, what to do and how to do it and what personal engagement should look good look like. And... Uh, all the other criteria that's in there. So I'll put this into my own words and share it with you. Then I don't get into trouble with the IB for sharing something which I ought not to do.